Hi everyone. Welcome to Satvikos Food Yoga Nutrition Talks where we discuss the importance of nutrition in your yoga practice. Myself Meghna, a yogi at Satviko. And today I have with me Andre and let me give a quick introduction about her. As a passionate yoga practitioner and teacher, Andre approaches her practice and the practice of her students with mindfulness and compassion. She keeps the mind focused on the body's anatomy and the kinesiology of movement. She motivates but does not push. For the past 30 plus years, she has studied across multiple yoga disciplines with some of its leading teachers. BKS Iyengar, Ashtanga and Vipassana meditation as well as Matt Pilates are the foundation of our teaching. Hi Andrea. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing fine. Thank you. It's great to have you here. So, Andre, um, if you would like to share something about your uh, journey of yoga and teaching. Sure. I'm going to start um, very quickly, go an overview of uh, my life as a yogi. I started uh, practicing Vipassana meditation. And I noticed that through the long sitting of meditation, my, I was more concentrating on discomfort of my body. And so it was a natural progression to go to physical yoga. And I was young. And for, uh, for many years, I did yoga on a physical level. But one day, yoga became my meditation. So it became vipassana in, in action. And that's how I see my yoga practice. And that's how I see my approach to teaching my students. Nice, nice, very nice. Really inspiring for me as I have just, as I'm a young yoga teacher who's, who's new to the industry. Really inspiring. Yeah, yeah, don't be hard on yourself if you don't feel like going to a yoga class. You know, because for a long time, um, I would say, oh, I don't feel like doing it, but I would go because it felt good after. And one day you graduate to wanting to go and feeling good during and then feeling good after. Yes. Makes sense. Makes sense. Sounds wonderful. Yeah. So there are a few days where even I don't feel like, you know, coming to my practice or doing anything, even, even, even for pranayam, I need to push myself. Yeah. So I just, I just keep this thing in my mind that I just need to roll out my mat and then just come on my mat. So that I, I just take one baby step, come on the mat and then rest will just flow. Yes. And you, you know that uh, pushing yourself a little bit is very valuable because it teaches you discipline. Yeah. Can I awesome. say something about this, this time that we've been through uh, for a few years now, two years uh, in lockdown because of COVID-19. And I found uh, it was really difficult that when I lost all my students, the physical. And also it felt difficult to study with my teachers on Zoom. But then I began to see the value of teach, study with my teachers on Zoom because I had the guidance, but at the same time, it was like my own practice. So I learned a lot during uh, COVID-19. Nice, nice. Everybody has gone through a lot of changes during this time. Agreed, totally agree with you. So during this journey of yours, how did you take care of nutrition? Well, as I was a vegetarian, I was raised vegetarian, but uh, again, um, and I ate very little dairy, but during COVID-19, I became vegan. Oh. And I just, it just dropped away. I just didn't feel like it anymore. So I think it's hard to, for me to give advice on nutrition, except that don't eat late at night. Don't eat, uh, uh, don't exercise late at night and don't drink coffee or drink alcohol 
before you go to bed. You know, I mean, I may have not to say that too, but people do that sometimes, have a nightcap. Because if you have a good sleep at the right time, then your, um, your diet, your, your, what you want to eat changes. Hmm. So I listen to uh, when I'm hungry, I eat when I'm hungry. Very nice tip. It seems to be a very simple one, but actually it's very hard to implement it on a regular basis. Yes. yes, you just do the best you can every day. And I would suggest that when you eat, you slow down how you chew your food so that you get to experience yeah. all the flavor in the food. So you could make eating a meditative practice. That's, it's, that's so right, because in Ayurveda, we say that eating with mindfulness. Don't talk while you're eating. Yeah. Yeah. Makes totally. I mean, it's the easy, simplest of the things that I think we already know, but it's just that we are not implementing it in our lifestyle. This is a very good point because we know a lot of things intellectually, but can you go from the intellectual to the real knowing, meaning that you are present, you are become the awareness. So. Intellectually, you, we know a lot of things and then one day, whatever you know intellectually, suddenly changes and it becomes, and then you never forget. Totally agree with you. Can I ask you, can I yeah. ask you a question? Definitely, go um, ahead. During, during COVID, I got introduced to Sad Guru. Have you heard of Sad Guru? Yes. I, I always would. wonder what people from this country People from this country, how they viewed him, Sadhguru. I find him very inspiring. He's a super intelligent man and a very exciting, he has a very exciting approach to life. So he's been, I've also been influenced by, by him. Yeah. So, yes, uh, um, there are a lot of people who uh, have been influenced by Sadhguru. Uh, they follow him. Um, I personally have no, I do not, I have not, you know, followed his teachings or I don't know much about it because I follow another spiritual guide. But yeah, I mean, there are a lot of his spiritual teachings that are very refreshing, that are very, you know, he presents things in a very simplistic way. So yeah. yeah like, I don't follow him. I mean, I don't follow like one person, but I find him really entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. I love good feelings. <laughs> nice, nice. So, currently, what do you eat as your pre and post yoga nutrition food? Often, to be honest, um, I don't feel like eating before yoga. And after yoga, it takes me about half an hour to an hour to be hungry. So oh. I literally feel that yoga is nourishing me. And I know it may sound strange to some people, but my body tells me it feels good. And then I get hungry and then I eat. So, so I don't have has... any rules. I don't have any rules. Meaning okay. that if I'm hungry before I, I go to a yoga class, but then I would eat about at least an hour before. Okay. okay. Don't eat don't eat just before yoga. Okay. Any specific snack or any specific food item that you are trying to uh, inculcate as a pre and a post meal? Well, I have strange snacks that are tabbouli. So the tabbouli is a, it's like a salad. It has parsley, it has bulgur, it has a lot of nutrients and it's uh, it's low calorie. I, I don't care about low calorie because I have no weight problem, but it is low calorie and it is very refreshing. But it depends on the season. So, for example, in the winter, um, I may want more soup, but I don't really snack a lot. And if I snack, it would be on fruits or, nice. you know, I'm really boring <laughs> when it comes to. No, food. no. <laughs> I like good food. Not that I don't like good food, but I don't snack a lot. Nice. So, is it that you've always had this kind of nutrition? You've always been following this, or is this something that you developed during the course of time? 
it's always been natural for me. I always naturally, I never uh, like to feel too full when I eat. Um, I prefer to feel more empty. So I think it's a very personal thing because some people really like to have that feeling of fullness, yeah. you know? So the important thing is that you choose the items that you eat carefully and through trial and error. But I mean, don't buy something that you shouldn't be snacking on. So use your real power when you go shopping. Because if you have it inside the house, the temptation is too great. Yeah. Just don't be greedy. You shouldn't mm. be greedy around food, no matter mm. what you eat. Mm. So we should train our minds to opt to think about healthy options. Or we should, yeah. we should train ourselves Take, slowly. Mm. Exactly. Think about where your food comes from mm. and what, you know, what does your body need? And of course, you know, it, it may be when you don't eat meat, for example, it takes a little bit more creativity to know to keep your nutrition uh, good. So you may take, if you're not sure, you may want to take some supplements if you happen to be vegan, you know, like calcium or something like that. But, yeah, yeah. You know, mostly you get calcium from vegetables, from greens, and but they also depend. Uh, you know, like in this country, in Boston, it's really expensive to eat vegetables. <laughs> okay. So it's cheap. Yeah, it's cheaper for people to go to a McDonald's or Burger oh. King and eat meat, right? Okay. It's cheap food, and so they get overweight, but because they eat the wrong food. You know? Yeah, yeah, agreed. Nice. I didn't know about this thing. <laughs> so help me understand this. Um, what do you think will qualify as a pre or a post yoga meal snack? One tip, one thing that you would like to give out. I would eat something solid. Okay, I know people like the uh, 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 you know, uh, really ingredients. Make sure it's, it's healthy and energy bar. But don't drink too much liquid before yoga. Now I'm speaking from a personal yeah, yeah. experience that I know if I drink like a whole bowl of soup, I don't want to go and do a twist yeah. after I eat the soup. So take mm -hmm. of it that way. Think about what you do when you do yoga, right? You want to have you want to be you squeezing things. Mm -hmm. So you should be as empty as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. But nice. I, I want to say that I used. I used to teach cardio uh, exercise as well. And what I would tell my students is if you feel, you, especially if you want to lose weight, eat before your cardio exercise, by an hour before. So then when you finish with your cardio, you're not ravenous and eat everything under the sun, right? So that you, you give your body something before you use it up and then you eat to replenish. Right. It's a philosophical way. Huh. You know, it's a philosophy around food. Nice. That's a great tip. That's a great tip. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, one last thing. So we have this awesome collection of pre and post snacks and meals like antioxidant makhana, endurance okay. and strength instant meals. So Satviko offers such uh, pre and post yoga meal snacks. Maybe you would like to try some? No, I don't, you know, I, I never know ahead of time what I want to eat. So I don't usually do that sort of thing. But I would recommend that to people who are transitioning yeah. uh, to a new diet. I would be happy to recommend you. I mean, because it's, if I see the product, okay? Yeah. I get information about the product. Yes. Nice, nice. All right. So, yeah, that's all that I had to uh, ask you today. Thank you so much for your valuable time and insights. It was great connecting with you. Have a good day. Same here. Same here. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We will be organizing Bye -bye. more such food yoga nutrition talks. We would love to hear from you and answer your questions. You can either DM us, mail us or leave us a comment. Thank you okay. so much. I will.